Welcome to North Texas Networkers, a show about connecting people across the DFW Metroplex. As realtors, we get the opportunity to meet and work with a variety of interesting people. And this is our chance to introduce you to them. Join us as we talk with our community influencers, share their inspiring stories, and reveal how and why they shape our local communities. I'm your host, Kara Lee Gurney. And I'm your co-host, Stacey Reevely. Thank you for joining us. Hi, and I'm Stacy, And we are so thrilled today to have Maylee Thomas and Fuller <laughs> and Mayor George Fuller with us. Mm-hmm. And also, I want to just recognize Willoughby Mortgage for, and Craig Schrank for always sponsoring our show that we're so grateful to have and meet these great people. Uh, first of all, Maylee Thomas Fuller, you are a philanthropist former uh, band member with the Rolling Stones, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, she has the Maylee Thomas Band. Um, she also is a philanthropist with several different ones, but um, both she and Mayor Fuller have started Love Life Foundation. Um, Mayor Fuller, you, you also have a lot of things going on. You have a few. <laughs> have a few. <laughs> Guitar Sanctuary, you're Guitar a sanctuary, builder, developer, the, yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. So, and mayor of one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Wow. So, That's a lot going on. The greatest on. city in the, in the country. There you go. And, uh, well, let's start at the beginning <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your family. Tell us about sure. how you guys met. And well, um, I'll let George talk about how we met, but uh, we have four children and, um, t- and two grandchildren now, uh-huh. which is crazy cool. Grandchildren are better than it's the children best. sometimes. It's the they? best. And they live <laughs> one street over, so that's even better. We can go see them pretty often. Uh, our, our children, I'm almost an empty nester. Our youngest is starting school at the Art Institute this year, and we're really proud of her for that. We have a son that's in the Army. Um, very excited about his future. He was just selected to try out for what his passion is, which is skydiving, a, a team called the Golden Knights, which is um, basically they would, you know, he would, he would work right alongside with the um, Blue Angels. And so I'm excited about that because if he gets on that, mommy will be happy because he'd never see any combat, no matter what happens. <laughs> oh. so. isn't, isn't that an oddity when you are happy that your son will be out of harm's way because he's jumping out of an airplane? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Is he out of harm's way? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much uh, what I should have expected. He told me, Mom, when I said, son, really? You want to jump out of an airplane? And his name is Rain. Uh, yeah, so he said, should... Mom, you named me Rain. I'm supposed to fall out of the sky. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. And in context, the Golden Knights awesome. is, a, is a skydiving exhibition team mm-hmm. for the Army, yeah. for those that don't know. And then uh, our son, Austin, our oldest son, is um, working with George in the business, family business. And then our daughter, Million, just got home from two and a half years of being with YWAM, with the, which is Youth with the Mission. And she's our daughter that we adopted from Africa. And she's got a heart really? for for change and helping you know those that are less fortunate and so she's back home and working in a school that we support called Holy Family School so life is really good right now for us oh, as a family amazing. and our kids so how did you two meet yeah um, well notice in the beginning she said I will handle this and then I'll let George say that's our relationship <laughs> I want to say first of all I want to thank Maylee for for letting me <laughs> um, no that's great uh, how do we meet? You know, we're, we're both musicians among many other things. And, uh, one day back in the, I guess it was 1990, uh, I was playing with my band down in Dallas Alley and we took a break and, and I walked over to see another band and it was Maylee and the band she was in. And, uh, if you've seen her perform, you would understand my attraction at first sight. And, uh, <laughs> and then oddly enough that following Monday, um, they called a recording studio and a studio at the time. And, and uh, asked if they knew, if our studio knew any guitar players because they're looking for a guitar player. There you are on screen right there, is that, right? Is that me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, wow. not me. No, See, that's that's different. That's, that's uh, That is our good, that's May Lee and um, our wonderful friend Andy Timmons uh, playing guitar and Mike Dane on bass. 
And uh, there's a symbol in the way of the drummer, so I don't know who that is. But <laughs> <laughs> Very high energy, yeah. it looks like. But that's how I we met. See. We met musically and started playing together, and, um, and then that ended up turning romantic and then married in 1994. Wow. So it's been a crazy journey since then. That's exciting. So and if you'd have said that he was going to be the mayor of McKinney someday and I was going to be his wife, I would laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> say there's no way. Not quite how you envisioned uh, your path in life going. No, but yeah. it's, been, um, it's been very exciting, and he actually is doing a fantastic job, and I'm really proud of him. And, and we both have made McKinney our home, mm -hmm. so it just feels really natural to, to be in the position that we're in because we love it so much. And it, you know, it's a great city. It, what made yeah. you decide to run for mayor? Oh gosh, you know we um, it's it's a fast growing city, and uh, the 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 time we're in right now, as a city at such uh, growing at such a pace, uh, we knew we needed to find somebody that really had uh, you know, development experience or vision, uh, uh, just just somebody that we we felt. I say we. I'm talking about the business community that I'm involved with. Uh, that would be a a good shepherd of the city as we grew and strategic thinker and that kind of thing. So. I didn't come to mind at all for myself. We we picked you know many people that we went and met with, but uh, over a many month period, um, it just people in our group kept saying, "George, you need to do it. You need to do it." And I said, "No, I definitely don't need to do it. I I, I don't even think I want to do it." But um, truly, it was just about the city and and being uh, being at a place in my life where I have the ability to make the time to to serve a community that's been tremendous for me for my family. So. Uh, I always thought we did it for the money. Well, we did. I get four hundred. <laughs> I get four hundred and fifty dollars a month. I think is what I get. I haven't. I don't know. But um, so definitely, definitely for the money. But no, it's just, it's just, it's obviously an honor to to get to serve um, in a community that you mm -hmm. feel so passionate about. You know, I think of, or a lot of people think of a city and the growth and the things that you're doing. And you talk about the growth of McKinney. You mentioned that. Mm -hmm. You know, I from a community standpoint I think Stacy and I think a lot about the people the hearts and 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 what you can do to change people's lives I think you're doing that a lot with your charity but what what one thing do you think people in a community can do to make a difference in the people in McKinney or even in the community uh, the whole as a whole the the, the county uh, gosh I would say stop putting the letters UN in front of social media Stop making it unsocial media. Make it social media. Um, truly, that's that's, that's actually that's actually what I would say. I would say that uh, if there is anything people could do in the community across this country, across the state, across the world, uh, for me, especially as an elected official, you know, you, you know that there's ugliness and 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 whatnot um, online. But when you put yourself in the position like I have as an elected official, I think you see the underbelly of that much, much more. So what I what I if I could change one thing. It would have people um, really take. Remember, social media, not unsocial, and and uh, and and start being kind and respectful to one another. I mean, I think the divisiveness in uh, mm -hmm. if we have divisiveness in the city, you can almost always trace it back to a lot of rhetoric online, um, much of which is unsubstantiated kind of stuff. And uh, across the country, same thing. So for me, I'm, I'm passionate about my. Uh, my disdain for for that keyboard warrior, um, you know, kind of uh, social media uh, well, antics. Well, on the flip sense. side, um, you know, it's it's all what you make it. And I tell my kids all the time, you know, we have um, they live in a time where, gosh, if we would have had the ability to just ask Google a question about something. I mean, we had to go to the library to research on microfish. Remember mm -hmm. that? Oh, and and, the and decimal system. Uh, oh, yes. Oh. And we had to have encyclopedias, yeah. you know, and uh, to look things up. And so it, it is tremendous what it's done for, for them in that regard. Um, and I think that it can be a real positive asset if we just look at it that way. But it's all what, what we make it and how mm -hmm. we do it. And I actually use social media in a very positive way to get the word out, you know, about um, things that we're passionate about. And uh, and it's been very good. But I think Georgia and I both, um, we've been very vocal about the fact that we think the divisiveness that's going on through partisan politics and, um, you know, just when people would just find the things that they can agree about and, and not the things they don't agree about, we can get so much more accomplished. And I think as a community, we're growing so much and so many different um, 
people are coming into our community from different religious backgrounds and and you know ethnicities all of that and we love it and we love embracing them and learning about them and um, I think that for us both we're very very strong leaders in trying to bring people together and, yeah. and find all the all of the things that we have in common. I love that. I love that. I'm glad we asked yeah. that question because it's such a, a great, solid answer. Yeah, absolutely. So the Love Life Foundation was founded, what, 1992? 1992. So, um, there were so. about six of us at the time uh-huh. that started it, and um, it's come. It's pretty much come back to where George and I are heading it up, and, and uh, my parents helped us with this and another really? couple that have n- moved on, and, um, and it's, been, it's been very rewarding. So yeah. what is the mission of the Love Life Foundation? So uh, we started out, um, you know, really focusing on at-risk women and children and abuse. Uh, we were very instrumental in helping um, start the Advocacy Center, Collin County Advocacy Center, and, um, and helping with CASA and a lot of those different groups. Mm-hmm. And it's just grown now to, to really reach out to the underserved. And um, as you guys know, I know because you both have a philanthropy background, mm-hmm. as we grow, so do the needs. And um, I'm just, my, my heart is full when I see how uh, our community has gotten behind us. And, you know, we have a lot of outreaches on uh, different sides of the scope. And so many people show up and give and, and want to be a part of it. And it's just a really rewarding thing. It's probably the most selfish thing I've ever done because it makes me feel really good to do it. And, and I'll be honest, that's why I do. Mm-hmm. That's why I do it. So when you're picking charities that you're going to support, what criteria do you pick? Is it just children? Is it? Uh, it's a lot of it is women and children. Okay. Um, but, you know, just we've, we've, pretty marked ourselves uh, lately of just whenever we find out somebody that can actually see a major difference. I mean, we've never been sponsored by major corporations. It's literally by a lot of, um, you know, grassroots grassroots efforts. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do is have us help people that where a $10,000 donation or $5,000 donation makes a real difference in their life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so that's that's a lot of our criteria. And what are some of the things that you do? Um, well, we've in the past year, some of the most rewarding is we were we helped um, with a lot of other people, a girl that um, needed a van, an all access van. And uh, we've, we were instrumental in helping get people together for that. And there was it was a community effort. I think that's probably one of the the best feelings in the world was how McKinney came together and a lot of different groups got together and raised enough money to get this girl a van that um, now she's mobile. Mm. And right right after high school, she had been in a tragic accident, a victim of um, of, uh, someone drunk driving and and left her uh, paralyzed in a wheelchair. And so imagine, you know, her her dependency on getting around and being able to um, be involved and engage in the community. And she's got that loving, giving you know spirit herself and she wants to be out there and and had to rely on uh on people to get her around and now she has the ability to take herself wherever she wants to go and i can tell you wherever she wants to go is always a place she should be and and because she's just a ray of sunshine hope and and yeah, i want uh, to go ahead and give a shout out to her. her name is tanya winchester and she's got um she's she's got a motto save for a purpose and she's taken, uh, you know, tragedy and turned it into a real tremendous mm-hmm. asset because now she goes out and speaks to kids about the importance of not being in a car with someone that's been drinking. And, yeah. and yeah. Uh, she's just a phenomenal spokesperson. And that's just part of, of McKinney and what we do and how we've been a tremendous community in helping her get that message out. Do you mind me asking, I mean, is, there any, is there any one thing in your life that, that – made you really have a passion to want to help others yeah um i was you, one of these sure kids that, that was actually us? a victim um of a you know horrific thing like that and and um so i knew that at some point i wanted to be a spokesperson and not be ashamed to admit that um yeah i had i had a tragic abuse situation in my life and george gave me the strength to do that um as i got older because we you know, we wanted people to know there's no stigma involved in admitting to that, you mm-hmm. know. But I didn't want to be a victim the rest of my life. I wanted to be a victor, and I wanted to be able to talk about it. And so um, 
you know, we all came together, and now I'm not ashamed to tell the story, and I want people to know yeah. it happens. And um, well, and, and and I think it's out of context because you haven't you didn't stay, so I'll state it. It was a sexual abuse. Yeah, it's, sexual um, abuse as a, as a child from a family member, and uh, at, you know, at a time when you think you're supposed to be protected. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a stepdad, and my mom actually, she didn't know how to handle it, and she ended up giving me up. And so I went on to live a tremendous life with my father and my stepmother, and uh, full circle, I was able to, I forgive her, my mother, and after almost 30 years, uh, reunited with her and uh, put her in a home because she was, you know, not doing so well, and she just recently passed away a couple months ago, and I can tell you that I have a piece about where I ended up with her. Forgiveness is very powerful, it is. isn't it? Yeah. It really is. That's amazing. You can see it on your face, too, that you can tell. <laughs> you you are a victor. <laughs> Thank That's you. Awesome. That's how I want to be yeah. remembered. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and tell mm -hmm. us about the Guitar Sanctuary. What is the Guitar oh, just Sanctuary? Just the greatest store that ever existed <laughs> on planet Earth. I mean, there's a, uh, there's a uh, when you walk in our store, and I think there's a picture of it, um, it, it truly is. It's just a, a passion for me, guitar playing guitars. And specifically, when I opened the store, it was all about um, creating a place where people that were passionate about their instruments and the, what they built mm -hmm. uh, and those who played could come together. And so we have a lot of boutique uh, amp and guitar builders um, from all across the, the world that uh, we we take and, and uh, in stock. Uh, in the store, we have players that come in. It's just a great community of musicians, feeling store, and uh, and love it. Yeah. Love uh, love the Guitar Sanctuary. Well, and, and uh, along with that, we have a venue that's connected to it. We have a 300-person yeah. venue, and we are able to have these, you know, fantastic musicians come in and play. <laughs> that's so fun. And so it's just and it's, it's also a, a place to where we can play. Mm -hmm. you know? Is that where you do your radio shows sometimes? Um, actually, no. I'm at KLAK, which is a um, it's 97.5 radio yes. station. We have Texas Homegrown Music Show. But, um, but what's great is we can bring them in and have them play at the mm -hmm. event center and we and we do that a lot and it's it's just been really really fun and and like i said it gives george and i a, a place to play and <laughs> well you know it started um our dear friend annie timmons who was in that first video clip mm -hmm. guitar player musician extraordinaire um he and i went on this quest to find a currently made manufactured delay pedal pedal that creates delay uh to mimic the accurately what everyone considers the best piece of gear that was made 50 years ago that you can't find anymore so the quest was we were, we're going to open a store and i'm going to bring every pedal from across the world every manufacturer until we find the right pedal and then i'll close the store so <laughs> and and i thought this has got to be less expensive than me <laughs> buying on ebay every pedal i see i'll be the distributor and uh, that was a uh, that was not the best decision that i made as far as you know being less expensive um but truly it was one out of passion you know uh, one thing uh, that that happened that's happened with the internet and all of that is many of the independents and small companies went out of business most mm -hmm. if not almost all in our area um, big box retailers came in you can buy things online so um, and that which is on one hand great mm -hmm. but on the other hand it you, what you miss in the experience as a musician is uh, the experience that I had when I first started playing going into stores and meeting other musicians and, and having that interaction um, so I thought, well, I want to do that, but how do I do that in the world of today's, you know, competitiveness with big box retail and online? Um, so we just decided, uh, you know, something unique, mm -hmm. only bring in the really unique manufacturers and that you don't get from big box retail. And, and it's worked out really well. It's been, been great. We opened in 2010? 2010. Yeah, nine years ago. God, that put... Puts time in perspective. <laughs> I'd have said a few years ago. I need to go no. hang around the Adriatic more often. I know. <laughs> I gotta go see that. So, and we have our Love Life Market inside of the sanctuary, and we're getting ready to, you know, uh, have it downtown as well. And that great little downtown area mm, of McKinney. Awesome. That, oh, I that love I, the square, and I do go there a lot. I love it. That I love so much, um, and it all um, goes to our foundation to help. You know with everything that we do so that's really nice you can come in and buy something for yourself and feel good about doing something for someone else love that 
So let's let's step back in time a little bit. Yep. Tell us how each of you got started in the music business. How did that how did that fall into your you want me to go journey? first? Do you want to? I yeah, go for it. Uh, <laughs> so I always wanted to play guitar from a little kid. I wanted to play guitar, and I had um, my father, who also has passed now, back many years ago, twenty five years ago. Um, great, great man. Great, uh, just a great father. Uh, but he had one. If there was one little thing that that we didn't agree on, is he assumed that guitar playing rock and roll, which is what I'd like, rock and roll equals drugs equals death. So, <laughs> so he thought, let's cut out the middleman and avoid the end. So right. no guitar, because that will lead to death. all the bad things. Right? Um, yeah, but he uh, and every other aspect of life completely rational. Uh, but uh, so I always wanted to play but I couldn't I remember buying my first guitar at a garage sale my father came home and saw it and said no no you gotta take it back um, but uh, so I didn't start playing until I was in college I was I was 19, 20, 21 you know it was mm -hmm. at the end of my college I, I started uh, started playing guitar but um, that's how I started how I got into it and uh, always had a passion for it and haven't been able to dedicate the time I'd like I have a couple other hats I wear yes mm -hmm. and you started Singing when you were four or something. Well, I yeah, I mean, I came from um, my uh, musical background. Uh, my grandparents both full time musicians, but um, I actually started out where I thought I was going to be a ballet dancer. I did mm -hmm. that for almost you know sixteen years, and I um, went up to New York with uh, my instructor and a couple other girls to look at the American Ballet and see if that was something I wanted to do and. I got up there and I was still singing. I had uh -huh. a little band that I was doing, but I got up there and saw they were living in these rat-infested apartments oh and gosh. they were all starving <laughs> and you know, you know. So she thought I'll be a musician. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'll be a musician. They're not starving and living in rat-infested. Yeah, what no. was that thinking? I, right. So that would have been the answer if you become a doctor. So I decided I'm yeah, going to no, not. So uh, yeah, I just went one step up, but um, yeah. So I started out actually singing a lot in church because that's you know you know I'm old enough where that was how you started out if you mm -hmm. wanted to play that and we were playing at a lot of VFW halls and Rotary Club anybody mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. needed Listen. music and uh, open for the puppet shows yeah exactly mm -hmm. um, but yeah so I've been doing it since I was uh, young. But I really didn't get serious about it until um, I moved back to Texas. Mm -hmm. and I was traveling all over, and I came back to Texas in the later 80s. And actually, George and I both came back to, or you came to Texas. And I'm a Texas girl. I was born here, but went off and yeah. traveled and came back. And my parents lived here. My dad lived in Plano. And I came back to be close to him and ended up being in a lot of bands and as fate would have it, George and I got together, and we've been playing music for 28 years. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's been quite a ride, and we've got, an, I think we've got a good 28 years to go. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Willie's doing it. <laughs> Willie's doing it for sure. Yeah, Willie, yeah, is Willie doing can it. do it, I can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So we still enjoy it, It's a, and it's opened up a lot of doors for us. Mm -hmm. Um, truly, and um, and we'll continue to do that. And now with him as mayor, it's a lot of fun for people to find out that you know we're both musicians and mm -hmm. pull out a guitar and play music for some of these, you know, stuffy meetings. They're mm -hmm. they're just like whoa. Makes it really fun. I love listening to you. It's I fantastic. love listening to yeah. Live music just brings people together. It really it does. does. Well, music, you know, is it transcends. It, it, it does. does. It transcends transcends everything. It either right. changes your mood, makes you feel better, yeah, yeah, G gives you some deep thought. Exactly. So, how do you guys support each other the most? It sounds like you've got so many things going on. You have both got busy, busy lives. You wear many hats. What do you do to help support each other the most? Financially, no. Um, <laughs> Since you only make four hundred and fifty so a month, I make four hundred fifty dollars a month, and all of that goes to Maylee's Starbucks bill. Um, yeah, and I'm actually the bigger abuser of Starbucks, aren't I? Um, you know, we, uh, we're, it, number one, it makes it easy to support one another when you're in a band together. Mm -hmm. Take away the obvious conflict that may happen when you're in a band with your spouse. But, but we support each other it's musically. We're just, by, by what we do, we're, by definition, me as a guitar player, I'm supporting her on stage with music behind what she's singing. And, uh, and, and she sings those things, what are they called again? 
words, lyrics, uh, that fill up the space until the guitar solo. So um, we support each other that way, you know? And, uh, and, but, and then as mayor, she's ultra involved, you know, with me in the city. And the city got, got a two for one deal when I, got, I was elected. Uh, she's completely involved, every aspect of it, every council meeting. Um, she's, she's engaged and, and uh, you know, paying attention to what's going on in the city. And then all the events, she's, she's there. So is he your guitarist in the Maylie Thomas band? Oh yeah, and and has been since we started. So, I love that. Um, and I, I tell people all the time, you know, it's it is very rewarding for us to be able to give um, together like that something that we're both so passionate about. And there's there's moments on stage that something will just click. And I mean, you know, I've gotten real weepy in my older age now. <laughs> I feel like I cry a lot, but it's um, it's just so. It's just so wonderful to have someone um, that is such a part of my life in so many aspects. And I think, you know, for most people that are married and understand this, that, um, you know, you have to come to a place where you, it's a give and take for sure. Um, I, I joke about how the first 25 years of our life together, um, people were coming up to him and saying, oh, you must be George Thomas, you know, because it was the Maylie Thomas band. And um, now it's his turn because now people are coming up to me. Oh, you must be the mayor's wife, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Maylie Thomas, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> but um, truly, I think that probably the, what makes it work for us is that when uh, life gets in the way, and sometimes it does, and you, you feel like you're being separated, for us to stop and take, you know, take a look at what really counts the most. And uh, none of these things really count. At the end of our life, you know, it's the investment that we make in our, our family and our friends. And to know that we left this world with something that, um, that they can continue on with. And um, I, I know I was put on the earth to just love people. And when, I, when I'm not here, I want people to remember that, you know what, no matter what you want to say about Maylee, she loved and she... She gave everything that she had. I told my daughter last night, I'm going to be that one that they drag across to the other, other side, wherever that other side is. <laughs> um, I'm going to be the one where they literally drag me across and said she left it all there. Yeah. And, uh, and I feel like George is the same way. We're both very busy people. A lot of people say that we're very busy, but I think it's more than that. It's really not busy. It's we're engaged, and we like to give, and, and we, we like to be a part of people's lives. And... And we do it together, and we've been through our ups and downs, yeah. but we've come across, we, we've come out of this thing making a commitment, and mm -hmm. it's probably more of that than anything else, because if you go by feelings, those are going to change. Mm -hmm. but, True. Yeah. That is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Point. May, we've made a commitment to... You're stuck with me, and I'm like, kind of like oh. that, that gum on the bottom of the shoe that you cut, try to scrape <laughs> off and you can't get it off. It's just That's still me there. and his life. <laughs> He's stuck with me now. Yeah, it's not so bad. Oh, good, good deal. Good. So, what's next for you two? Um, Senate, Congress. <laughs> no. Are you run for president? no. Hey, would you run for president? <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stey off that subject. Um, I think that you might. Well, but, part uh, of the reason why I love him there. being mayor is because it's it's set up to be nonpartisan, mm -hmm. and I think um, no matter where you lie on that, partisan politics are just ugly right now. Mm -hmm. They've been ugly for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. that's true. So I, yeah, I enjoy my my position is one that I can I can be nonpartisan. I can be about people, not about party. And if I were to ever try to do something else in politics, I'd probably be very unsuccessful, um, because uh, to be in that, you've got to be a partisan player. And I just, I can't. I, uh, I'm yeah. about what's good for uh, for the community that I'm serving, and I could care less about partisan yeah. allegiance. There you go. Well, we have been so thrilled to have you on the show today. Thank you for coming. Thank you thank for giving you for your time. Us. I know yeah. your time is very valuable. So, no more valuable than yours. Uh, well, thank you. We just enjoy it. I mean, this is a highlight of my month every month. So thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you and for having us. also want to thank, again, Craig Schrank with Willowbin Mortgage for sponsoring our show. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. Enjoy. I'm Kara Lee. And I'm Stacy. And, and we, we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.
thank you for joining us on North Texas Networkers. Visit our website, MariposaGroupDFW.com. That's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A Group DFW.com for more information about the show and other resources. I'm Carolee. And I'm Stacy. And, and we, we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.